Hey, what's up? Thank you so much, everyone, for being here. Today is going to be fun. Let me just check and make sure that the audio runs OK. Uh, and then we'll get to it. We have a fun one today, just a lesson. I wanted to do a lesson in a while now. And don't worry, we're going to see who's in the chat in just one second. Let me test my audio. Good. So I actually played around with the um, microphone settings and I tried reducing the noise. Um, let's see how it's going to work. I think the, the sound should be much, much better. I'm sorry that I have this big thing in my face, but we'll have to deal with it. Most of the time we're actually going to be looking at this anyway. So uh, my face really isn't that important. Um, but in case, yeah, thank you so much for being here. Just let me know that you can hear me well and see everything well and we'll get to it. So Pam, awesome that you have your coffee in hand. That's important. Uh, hey, Nikki, how are you doing? Hey, Taco, how are you? Uh, hey, Megan. Hey, Pascaline, how are you doing? Bonjour from Wales. Awesome. Nikki, tomorrow, if the sun is shining, I intend to go and paint a particular mountain I've wanted to paint for many years, but never had the courage to uh, so looking forward to that's really really cool go for it if you can uh you know very often we have the the prettiest views right next to us and we just forget they exist and don't do this so this kind of a thing so yeah it's easy to take for granted uh hey monica how are you hey jill hey plumpy lump how are you doing uh john how are you nicole pat how are you doing uh, awesome. Yes. Thank you so much, Pascaline, for letting me know. So let me show you what we're going to do today. Uh, what I want to do is actually go over a bunch of uh, photos that are really nice um, and and figure out how we can use uh, perspective drawing for landscapes, because this is something I get asked about quite a lot, believe it or not. Um, and so I have all of my uh, reference photos here in front of me. Um, in my let me switch over to here um, and you can see I have this beautiful picture of the ocean and you think to yourself okay how does perspective come to play here so I have a few principles I want to go over with you we're gonna tackle every one of these uh, and talk about why they're important and how to uh, apply these to landscapes okay uh, landscapes seascapes more organic views stuff like that so I'm gonna go over the principles real fast and then we'll look at some of what you're saying in the chat in the meantime let me know how you're doing uh, what time it is what what if you've, you've had a busy day I'm curious to hear um, and also if you created that's always fun to hear so um, we're gonna talk about the difference between drawing a cityscape and drawing a landscape, you know, seascape, all of the rest, even still life, even aerial uh, views, all of that. There's a big difference there. Um, so that's something I want to make a distinction of. Then we're going to talk about sizes. We're going to talk about gaps, which is huge, or distances, you could call it. We're going to talk about details. We're going to talk about illusions and our faulty perception. We're going to talk about patterns and directions. And you can actually see all of this in the video's description. Okay. Now, this is very relevant for painting because the basis for your painting is going to be uh, your sketch, how you set it up. Um, and I want to show you how these principles come to play. So. Uh, we'll, we'll begin with the distinction between cityscapes and the rest shortly after. I'm going to see who's in the house. So we have uh, a bunch of other people here. Uh, thank you for being here. Marvin Chen, how are you? Karen, how are you doing from Istanbul? That's really cool. Richard, how are you doing? Uh, hey, Pam, again. Take notes. Uh, JT Tigera, too. How are you doing from Michigan and Nikki, New Zealand, still just after 1 a.m. Hey, Laura, how are you doing? Uh, let me know if you've been uh, feeling better and if you. I have not seen your email if you sent me one, so my apologies, but I promise to check it out. Um, Lillian, how are you doing from Sweden? Logan, how are you? Awesome. Yeah, yeah. This is going to be fun, kind of talkative. So if you want to create while listening in, you want to do whatever wash the dishes it's going to be a nice accompaniment there isn't much to see i mean there is but but you don't have to really look every second uh surely how are you manette how are you doing Day diane how are you um jackie sharif megan i had my students make ink blots for the warm-up in english class yesterday oh that's fun they really had fun and i think i inspired some to add uh, more art into their lives that's really cool and from florida how are you doing okay this is a good point to begin so let's start with a distinction so when you're drawing or painting cityscapes 
uh, the cities were built on principles of engineering and all the rest that goes into planning a city. The rules are very clear. The perspective and the guiding principles of art are actually created to describe reality. So one of the biggest principles in perspective drawing is that two parallel lines never meet. So they'll just continue being parallel forever. But when you look at them within a scene, they're gonna meet at a vanishing point. That's not something that exists in real life. It's just rules that we use to describe as best as we can real life. Now, when you paint or draw a landscape, a seascape, all of those things, they've been here long before we humans have been here. So they have a tendency to do their own thing. Hey, Marina, how are you? I see you. Hey, Nancy. They have a tendency to do their own thing, but they still follow the very basic rule of perspective. Now, what's the very basic rule of perspective? The closest something is to us, the larger it appears and vice versa. Just because of the way our eyes are built, we cannot perceive two objects, even if they're of identical size, one's farther from us, one closer, we'll always perceive the closer one larger, okay? Um, so that's the overarching uh, rule, if you will, that is relevant to everything, not just cityscapes, which you're going to see real soon. It's very fun, actually, to apply these principles to landscapes because one, it's easier, and two, it's going to take them to the next level. So if you feel decent in painting landscapes, sometimes, and I see this very often, people are very good at the painting stage, not at the drawing stage. So they kind of wing the drawing, which is okay. And then they paint and the, the paint, the technique looks awesome. But something in the drawing stage doesn't look real enough. And it's actually very easy to fix that, believe it or not. Uh, by doing a proper drawing beforehand. Um, so it's going to take you to the next level, really. Uh, sorry to hear you had a rough week, Laura. Um, if you send me an email, I'll definitely see it. Um, I actually reply to a bunch of emails. So maybe some of you have received um, email replies, but I haven't seen yours. Plumpy, come to Boston. It was seemingly planned by two dudes who just finished hammer boxing. Hammer boxing, I don't know what it is. It looks like Plumpy. I'm not sure what, you, what, you, uh, what you're uh, commenting on, but uh, yes, okay. No worries. Uh, whenever you have free time, it's, it's okay. Um, I was just scared I missed it or something. But So here's the thing. The most important... So here's the thing. The most important thing to remember with perspective, and that's something that, hey, just been, that will help you with everything, is the closer an object is, the larger it appears. So if we look at this seascape, seemingly, I don't know how straightforward it is to see this principle. But let me show you. So even when we look at, and I can actually draw, right? Because uh, we're doing it digitally. I can draw on the image directly. So let me choose a color you'll actually see. Let's go with a nice little bright green. I'm using Clip Studio Paint. You've seen probably my video on this software. Um, and let's make the size a little larger. So. If you look at this wave, for example, this foamy area, right? And you observe its size, its width, this, let's say this size, right? And you compare it to this here. Already, there is a difference between them. And let's compare it to something even farther, right around here. So let's move this shape that we just drew here. In terms of size, if I were, ooh, I can't move it because I drew direct, directly on the image, something to remember for next time. But let's just take a measurement here. Let's take a, the, one of the biggest measurements, maybe even one of the shortest. Okay, so if we take this big measurement and we just move it over here, look at this huge difference in width. And let's take the smaller measurement, even better to prove our point. And look at what happens here. This is the smallest. So already within this, you can see the difference. Things that are closer are larger. Now, when you're drawing, we have this tendency to forget about it. So what happens is, I'll just open up a blank, um, blank canvas here. I want to show you because this is quite spooky. Now, if I remember, 
been a while since I used this for painting. There we go. Okay. Used it a lot for sketching. So if we fill in uh, that layer, like so, I want to show you what happens very often. So you have this. It's a terrible uh, shape. Let me fix that. So you have this frame and you want to paint the ocean, right? And you end up, so you have foam here and you have foam here and you have foam here and you just forget the things that are closer appear larger. So this has no depth at all. But if you were to do a similar thing and just go with foam here and then foam here and then foam here without even adding any detail, you can convey that this is an ocean that has depth in it. So immediately we see how these concepts work. It's and once you see it, it's so obvious. You'll see it everywhere. Now, let me remove all of these layers that I did here. Let me see if I have enough control Z's to undo this. Um, let's go all the way up to here. Good. So look at what we have here. I'm going to add another layer. It's so easy to fall into the trap of looking at this and thinking, oh, this is actually a pretty similar in size to, you know, this is pretty similar in size to this, but it's not the case. This happens in every single thing you'll paint. Okay. Now there is another principle I talk about here, which is gas. Why did it disconnect? Okay. So the, I don't know why the Wi-Fi dropped or something. Okay. The Wi-Fi dropped, but it's going to be okay. Hopefully I'm going to follow it. Now let me check the. Okay, good. I think, let me know if you can still hear me because it looks like, okay, it's okay on my end. I don't know why it disconnected. Um, so, this is a wave, right? The, the apex of a wave, right? Now look at what happens in the distance. These are tiny, right? It gets smaller the further they go, right? And yes, some look big, but can you see the difference here? So this is very, very important. Thank you, Plumpy Lumpy. It was only a moment. Uh, Nikki, it is indeed uh, very, uh, very useful. Josephine, how are you? Good morning. I love it when I wake up just in time as usual. My, uh, my something are still fuzzy. I'm not sure what it is. Uh, I thought it was mine. No, no, no. It's, it's on my end, but now it's okay. I actually got a notification that it broke off for a second. So it's probably, it probably was a drop in the connection. So already you see all of these principles come into play here. Uh, another principle um, is details. So the closer it is, the more details we're going to see, the farther, less detail. So when you look at this wave right here, you can barely make out what's going on there. Even if we zoom in, there aren't that many visible details. But look at, compare it to this here, the closest part. You can actually see all the foam. You can see every little detail, right? So. This is just how our eyes are built to see these kinds of things. Okay. And I think this is pretty much it for this first photo. Let me know if you have any questions. Uh, Taco uh, refresh. Uh, I already started probably uh, an, an issue on your end. Something got stuck. Um, let me know. By the way, I have water here, not coffee, nothing fancy. I just. Uh didn't have a handy water bottle, so I grabbed whatever I could. Um, Taco, if you, uh, again, refresh, uh, you probably can't hear me, but um, if you refresh, you'll see it. But in any case, if you have, Nikki says the sound is gone. Let me test this. No, I hear myself, so it looks like it should be okay. No, it looks okay. Maybe it was a, a sudden break. I don't know. Uh, but in any case, this is how everything applies to just this first thing, scene that has ripples. Um, nothing too complex here. And actually, if I were to draw this kind of a scene, the way I would do this, and it's much easier, let me just go ahead and do this. So the way I would draw this, and of course it's easier because I have it in front of me, but even if I didn't, you've seen me draw things like that. The way I would do it, is I'll define the horizon line as I often do, right? And then I'll look at the main 
elements, which is the foam here. That is, can't help it. It's just the foam. And then there's another foam and another foam. And then I'll start putting in some of these more prominent ripples. So we can barely see, but here we go. Some of the more visible ones, right? But notice how as we go further, everything gets denser. Like this area is much denser than this area. That's just how it works. So this is a good way of showing you how this principle applies to a landscape, right? So we're going to move on to the next one. But I do want you to uh, let me know if you have any questions about this specific uh, example. Actually, uh, let me open it up again um, in case you do have questions about that. Um, and then we'll move on. Once I know you're OK, I'll, we'll move on to the next one. I do. Uh, so this was the next one, right? Yeah. I do want to see um, what you have to say about this one. Um, the chat is always uh, at a bit of a delay, so my apologies if it uh, takes time to address whatever we were uh, talking about. By the way, just saying. Um, thank you, thank you. I'm happy you can hear me. So yeah, if you have any questions about the waves, uh, ask away. This is something that you cannot unsee. Now, just to give you a quick, quick word about illusions and perception, it's something I wanted to talk about later on, but just have this in mind that the fact that there's such a huge dis difference between this gap, let's say this gap and that gap, it's something that is sometimes so hard to see because we're, we're, we know that if we look at the scene from above, probably there's an, an even distance between waves. If we were to look at it from completely above aerial photography, you know, you'd see the ocean, like let's say that you're in, on a drone and you'll see a wave, you'll see another wave, another wave, this is from above. They're probably going to be of equal distances. Our brains have a tendency to mislead us and make us think because of that, it'll be uh, of, of equal distances even when we paint it from, you know, from an angle. Just something to have in mind. Um, I guess I think we're good on that one. Let me show you another example. So we'll get rid of this and we'll move on to number two. It's gonna be for later. So one more thing I wanna talk about as a principle is gaps, okay? Gaps. So. The closer something is, as we've seen with the waves, the wider the gaps are going to be. And also in terms of sizes, again, the larger, closer, larger, farther, smaller. So look at what we have in this example. And this is really fascinating. Here we have these mountain ridges or really beautiful mountains. Very distinct view, right? I'm sure you can recognize it. Hey, Hanny, no worries. We didn't do too much. Uh, we're talking about uh, principles of perspective drawing as it pertains to landscapes, nature, uh, seascapes, even still life. Okay. So what you'll notice is closer areas like these here, you can tell we, we're not even going into painting principles like values. You can definitely tell that this value is darker than that value, right? We're not even talking about that. We're talking about size and gaps, or let's say spacious versus dense. So the farther it is, it's going to look a little denser. See this? This mountains in the background are very dense, close together. You'll see this with trees. You'll see this with all sorts of landscape elements. Whereas here, it's much more spacious, right? So this is another thing to have in mind. Let me create another layer here. Um, and of course, the reflections show that too. Now, there is something cool here I want to show you in just one second. You may not have not even thought about it. But just to reiterate again, size, close, large, right? Large and wider gaps between the different elements. Farther, smaller, right? And smaller gaps, exponentially smaller gaps. A perspective principle in a landscape. Now let's do something fun. So imagine this was a cityscape, right? What you'd get maybe on an equivalent as a cityscape, let's switch over to red. So you'll get, let's say maybe a few buildings here, like so, right? Something like that. 
and then the buildings become denser and denser as they move away from us and in the background you'll get the skyline and everything is going to be again close together see this so same goes here right you'll have a building and maybe a taller building it's all gonna work the exact same way and maybe they move closer towards us like that i forgot the bottoms here maybe you'll have just a building kind of chilling here in the middle right same principles same everything you can stick buildings into this scene it's gonna follow the same principles but the most important thing to remember is the same principles of perspective sizes distances because distance is just size it's the size of the gap between different elements right it's all going to be affected by perspective whether we're looking at a natural scene or a uh, cityscape okay um, now there's also a matter of details which is funny because when you look at this area right here it almost appears as if there's more details but there really aren't what you're seeing is just more mountains we actually move in closer you'll see now that's a healthy amount of details and if you compare it to these in the background you can barely see them barely make out the details of the contours right so it's something to have in mind now one thing you may have not noticed is the mountains and everything else reflects in the water right we got beautiful reflections now this principle is actually applicable to ripples as well the thing the very thing that makes up the shapes of the mountains in the reflections let's see we zoom in on these ripples what are you gonna get for the ripples that are closer to us and we'll have to really zoom in so you see look at what happens to the gaps between the ripples as they move away from us big gaps smaller gaps how cool is that not only the ripples are used to describe the shape of closer mountain ridge farther mountain ridge but also the thing itself that composes these ripples that line itself also applies we can also apply perspective to it in fact we should if we want to be accurate how cool is that right so you'll see this is one ripple let's see if we can count them this is another ripple another ripple another ripple another ripple no 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 and they become narrower the farther they go out from their epicenter if you will so that let's say the center is going to be um it looks to be there's this of course the ore right probably from here and then there's probably multiple ones same principle you can see it on this side right these wavy lines and then they get very thin the further they go so it's it's almost like a fractal of information so the more you are aware of these things the less overwhelming it's going to be to draw them in so the way i would approach this is first i'll start with big shapes so i'll first sketch with a pencil this is the horizon line and we get some mountains and we get the reflections of said mountains so i get all of the and the boat of course and the person or whatever it is here this uh, the whatever details there are in the boat right and then within those lines i'll start thinking about the details that's how i always like to work uh, from large to small i hope that makes sense because there's a lot that goes on in this little landscape it's beautiful and a lot of principles that apply okay uh, so let's see what you're saying in the chat nikki says thinking it will be a good idea to take reference photos of what i am painting tomorrow so i can compare the photos and the on location drawing painting when i get home and see where i'm going wonky this is actually a great method i really uh, advise people to do that um comparing this it's it's like calibrating yourself to your mistakes your own mistakes very important uh, hey john how are you doing i'm pretty sure it is uh, in an area with no phone and internet coverage otherwise it would be nice to have the run's voice in my ear reminding me what to be mindful of yeah probably while painting you don't need my voice uh but yeah it's a good thing after the fact to reflect 
Let's see. Uh, Sherry, good morning. I finally caught you live. Thank you so much for being here. Is this your first time watching live? That's awesome. Uh, Plumpy Lump. Nikki, you can download a video. Yeah, definitely. <laughs> Okie doke. So I think that's clear. Uh, we talked about sizes, we talked about gaps, we talked about um, details, um, illusions and perception. So this is actually quite important here as well. So one thing I notice uh, is, so there's this illusion, there's actually a better, um, a better example of this later on. I want to show you something. So if we were to look at these ripples from above, what you would see is that ore in the middle of the scene, right? And then the ripples coming out of that, let me switch over to blue just for fun. So you'll see the ripples like this. Going out of the, let's say focal point of the ripples, right? All the way out. What will typically happen is those ripples will become further apart the more outside they go. It's interesting how that works. So the more you go outside, the wider the gap is between them. Just something I noticed, okay? Now, that actually counteracts the whole perspective, but let me show you what happens when we Look at this scene from an angle like this. Let me switch back to red. Kind of like this, from a lower angle, this entire thing warps like that, okay? And we can even put it on a grid. Something like that. And the ore that was in the middle, now it dips into the water and everything we've seen here we get that same blue if i can will also be warped into perspective so you get something like this So it's a very interesting effect. And it's something to have in mind, right? And let me, if I, I'll clean this background for a second, just so you have an easier time seeing thing. There we go. Probably can even use a blank background, you see? So it's very interesting how that thing works. When you look at it from above and then you tilt it and look at it from a lower angle. And you can see how uh, the ripples around here. Okay, just one second. The ripples around here are gonna be a little closer to us, thus wider than the ones out here. Okay, so this is a principle of perspective that applies, believe it or not, to a landscape once again right and all of this information is encapsulated in this scene now just to zoom out for a while um and daniel says sorry i can't see these ripples i'm not sure if maybe it's not uh and good morning to you too um it's a bit hard it's they're very narrow and close together but uh, hopefully let's see here hopefully you can see it now a little better all around uh, the center area the way to improve your art, in my opinion, is to practice a lot, very practically. You practice more and more and more. You do the same things over and over again. The second way is to get the knowledge. When you learn how these things work, and then you practice just a specific concept, a specific method, it can be very useful for making you better in the more practical aspect of actually drawing this. So knowledge and practicality for the win, right? If you combine both, if you take a little time to learn the principles, it will help you a lot. Always have in mind 
even on an abstract level, that as things move farther away from us, they're going to get exponentially smaller. See how this immediately tells the story of depth, right? And we can even fill in the lines. And there you go. And maybe this is a stairway. Maybe it's going up even. It goes like this, right? It goes like that. And we're going up the stairs all the way into the distance, right? But our tendency is to draw things that way. Not enough. Not enough of that principle. Not enough of that. It's exponential. The gap here compared to the next gaps is so much longer. Okay? It's a bit of a mind trip. The first couple of times, it'll be a challenge. Then it will get easier. And sometimes people make the mistake of going, okay, things are getting smaller, right? So this is the closest. This is a little farther. This is a little farther. This is a little farther. This is a... Now, while this is better than completely the same gap, it's still not enough. It's not enough. Things actually go exponentially. Okay? You'll get used to it. It takes a while getting used to it. But I would challenge you. You know what? Here's something practical you can do. Grab right now, if you have a, a landscape that you painted handy, or a city, or a seascape, or anything like that, I challenge you to, to see if you have that pattern or not. I challenge you to go ahead and check if you've been following these rules, and you'll see. It's interesting. It's very interesting. This is not abstract, woo-woo, kind of, it's practical. You can immediately apply this to your work. Um, Lisa, Liron had taught me so much. His critiques of my roses on the fence gave me great respect. Oh, that's awesome. I'm so happy to hear. Uh, Eldery, good morning from Southern California. Uh, Daniel, happy you can now uh, get it a little better, hopefully. Alan, just got your courses last night. Thank you so, so much. I actually get notifications for every uh, purchase, so uh, I believe I saw yours probably uh, mixed in there somewhere. Uh, thank you. Much, much appreciated. Uh, Nancy, great points to keep in mind. Very helpful. Pam says, great. Thank you so much. Siham, thank you so much. I'm happy with all the information that I learned today. That's awesome. Yeah, I'm trying to make this as practical as I can. Um, if you want me to demonstrate something specific, let me know and we can do that for sure. Um, you know, if you want me to draw something from scratch and maybe we'll figure it out together, um, definitely let me know. The fun thing about landscapes is once again, it's so abstract that all you really have to think about is that those gaps and those sizes. You don't have to be 100% accurate. It's okay if this line right here in the middle is here where I placed it, or maybe it's a little lower, right? Maybe it's a little higher. We don't have to be 100% accurate, but as long as you're in the ballpark, it's gonna look really, really good. It's, it's much more forgiving. That's the best way I can put it. Um, so yeah, thank you. I'm really happy this, has helped. this helps. One thing I have been contemplating is to creating a perspective course, and I can have it oriented both to sketching and towards painting as well. Let me know if you'd like like a more comprehensive thing that has everything from start to finish. Very technical, but very detailed, so you'll understand everything. Uh, the kind of thing we're doing right now, analyzing photos, that's great. I mean, going over the basic principles, but there's a lot there. Measurement, measurement. So for example, I showed you this before. If you want to measure things in perspective, it's actually not that hard. So you have all of your lines coming out of the vanishing point, and let's say, you want to measure that same distance into the into the depth. So all you really need is another one of these lines here, if I'm not mistaken. Um, and then you go like this. And that's these two distances are equal in real life. And you do it again and you measure it again and you do it again and you measure it again. And you can see where this principle comes from. So all of these tiles are the same size. If we were to look at them from above, you'll actually see this. Crazy, right? Why? Because we have that line running through the middle. Oopsie doopsie, I need this color here. We have that same line running through the middle. See this line? 
and this line are the same, right? If you know these principles, it becomes easier to understand. So let me know if you'd like me to do a perspective course, because that's something I have in mind. Thank you, John. I'll definitely consider it. Um, there is a lot of technical information that sounds, you know, tough, but you, you know how I teach things. I teach them pretty straightforward, so you'll get it, right? So that's something I have in mind. Uh, it'll probably be a little longer and a little um, more, there's just a lot to talk about. Um, but I'll keep it, you know, fun, my style of teaching. Um, let's see here. Um, John, very happy this is helpful again. Uh, Harsh Deep, I can immediately use this. That's awesome. Tie Dye and Don, good morning, Liron from Wisconsin. Thank you for this video. It applies to all forms besides watercolor, indeed, yes. Jackie says this helped a lot. Very happy to hear. Uh, Pashkaline, I'd love to paint crashing waves. Yep, you got the principle. Same thing. Same thing, just keep those gaps exponentially shorter. Uh, Plumpy Lump, how would you attack the man on the water? Whenever I attempt painting like this, it inevitably becomes focused on the person. I leave the person out or the person is a smudge on the ripples. Yeah, that's a completely different topic, probably for a different day, to be honest. It's a bit more complex. Um, there are a lot of ways of tackling people within landscapes. And that's actually a good idea for a future live stream. So let me get out my trusty notepad <laughs> and I'm going to write it down as an idea for a future um, ideas because it's a good idea. I, I actually have a few videos on that, but we can do another uh, maybe live stream. Yeah, people and how to corporate and make them look natural good um yep yeah. and by the way you may want to check out my uh, how to sketch uh, sketching people master class course uh because it talks exactly about that um so yeah i don't think there's a link here but if you want it let me know and i'll drop the link uh, sketching people master class that'll be like just that um but I get it. I get the paint, Plumpy. I've been there. Trust me. I, I, it, it was a challenge. I'll show you old paintings of mine. The people are just a weird smudge too. <laughs> uh, Daniel, Liron, when we use a warp perspective for landscapes, like fisheye or something like that. So yeah, that's a bit different. Um, that type of perspective is a little more complex. I'll actually have to, if you want a technical explanation, I'll need to revisit uh, my own studies of perspective. But <laughs> Basically, this type of, let's say, fish eye, I don't know if that's what you mean, but what you'll get is instead of these kinds of lines that we're used to, right? So you have these perspective, two point perspective, for example, and then you can base a box or build a box inside of that. So a warp kind of perspective would look more like this. It will be more rounded so that you'll get this kind of a very exaggerated, well, this isn't as exaggerated, but it's gonna be exaggerated here near the edges uh, type of thing. But it's a bit different. And, and this can apply, by the way, to, this could be a four point perspective too. Again, I honestly, I need to uh, revisit some of these concepts myself. I can wing it, but to actually explain to you what it would like, what would make it happen. So then, in this case, you'll get. Let me figure it out because this is interesting, actually. So, around the edges here. If you have a box that's facing like this, hmm, it's interesting. It will be something like that. Very. Bulbous. I don't know what how else to describe it. Um, yeah, I'll have to, to do a refresher for myself, honestly. It's the same principles, closer, larger, farther, smaller, but it's even more exaggerated, right? So the real close thing becomes exponentially larger. Um, yeah. Let's see, I'm gonna continue with the comments. Where's my mouse? I have so many monitors, it's easy to lose track of my mouse. There we go. Um, 
Yes, please, we'd love that. Awesome, yes. Uh, where are your courses? Um, my courses are on my own website, but you can find a link in the description box. So if you go to the description box, you will see watercolor realism course, you'll see the frustration-free watercolor course, the beginner's drawing course, um, all of these. I should work on a page consolidating everything. I can't believe I still haven't. Let me write a reminder. Uh, we'll do that. Clear course page everything completely forgot about this but i definitely should do that. um yeah drop the thing uh let's see here if i can find it real quick should have a shortcut with the bitly um, let's see here uh sketching people Where? There we go. Copy. Let me make sure that's the correct one. Yes. It's. I'll need to. I'll need to prepare a better link. I. This is like a trial. You can actually get a trial. You can give it a go. I dropped it in the chat. Feel free to. <laughs> um, also, your preferred email. Uh, my preferred email is the one you can find in my channel. That's liron at lironyan.com. L-I-R-O-N at L-I-R-O-N-Y-A-N.com. Uh, is... Uh, <laughs> uh, hey, Daiji, just got here. Oh, hey, you're doing digital. Awesome. Yeah. Uh, we're talking about, hey Lollipop, how are you? We're talking about perspective drawing for the purpose of landscapes, okay? So we were actually looking at this landscape and talking about uh, perspective drawing principles to help you with this kind of a thing. So go back and, and look at it again if you need to, because what we're gonna do now, move on to the next one. Um, you can do just a left, just like, the, yeah. I'll do one uh, just to chill next time. I did want to do something that teaches. Now, we have this. This is a little different because um, I did want uh, to... Um, let me see if I can... I forgot to edit this image. Let me actually edit it and reopen it. I did want to show you just a quick snippet of how this applies right to... Um, to uh, landscapes, but I want to show you a cityscape example as well, okay? Uh, we have a lot more images to go through, but these are gonna be easier because it's gonna be a shorter explanation. So let me just make sure you can actually see something because this photo is quite dark. There we go. Changes. And open it up. And there we go, okay. so. Same thing we've been looking at so far, gaps, sizes. And for anyone who just joined, um, uh, Winifred, I'm not sure if you're talking about that previous landscape, but you're gonna see the same principles now. So we were talking about um, a couple of main principles. So one sizes, things that are closer appear to be larger and vice versa, gaps. Things that are closer to us are more spacious, while things that are further are more dense, okay? And finally, details, closer, more details, farther, more vague. So same principle will apply here, and even though it, it may not be as obvious at first. These cars are probably safe to assume in similar gaps between one another. So for example, these two cars, these two cars, these two cars are similar, similarly gapped, okay? Yeah, four point perspective, what a warp grid. Yeah, that's crazy, I know, that's really tough. Um, this is why I said I need to revisit some of my materials for that. So, again, these gaps, safe to assume they're pretty similar in reality. So if you look at this road in real life, you'll see a car and another car and another car. And all of these gaps are going to be somewhat equal. But look at what happens here. This gap is so much 
bigger than this gap. So much bigger than this gap. So much bigger than all of these other gaps. It's very misleading because if I get rid of everything here, I'll ask you, you know, to draw this. It's very tempting for people to draw the cars like this. One car here, another car here, another car here, another, oopsie doopsie, that's not what I wanted to do. Back. Get it back. Here. <laughs> uh, where was I? Um, three. There we go. It's very tempting to completely make this flat. Look at how flat this is. Whereas if you go like this and then like this and then like this and then like this, see it feels more leads us somewhere, right? Now, of course, there's the 3D structure of the cars that also comes into play, but that's more complex. I'm not even talking about that because we're talking mostly landscapes today, right? Um, so that's when we're talking about gaps, right? Now, sizes of cars. This car, you'd think that these two cars are of similar size because I mean, it's not that farther away, but I would bet you that if we actually grab this, I don't know, I didn't test this. Look at that. Look at this. Look at the size. Now, this is kind of a pickup. So maybe it's larger. But let's compare even a similar car like this car. Trying to be accurate here. And this car. Look at this difference in size. It's not as obvious. And how tempting would it be if we have nothing here to go like, okay, this is one car and this is a car that's farther, exactly the same size. We completely lose the impression, but one car, second car, third car. Even if the gaps aren't that big, look at how much there's a difference between these two instances, okay? So this applies, of course, to cityscapes, human-made things, right? Gaps, denser, denser areas. Look at how dense this area compared to this area, right? This is much denser. Because all of the cars are tightly squeezed together. Look at the buildings. Just like I told you. Building, building, building. That's one, two, three. Look at what's going on here in this small space. Our brains are extremely prone to these illusions. We have to consciously fight them if we want to draw accurately. It's, it's just a part of it. And that's fine. Now, we want to show you something cool. If we're talking about illusions already, take a look at these windows right here, okay? How easy would it be? And let me add a background this time. So I'm going to make this a white background like so. How easy would it be to know on a logical level that a window, if we look at it from the front, maybe looks like this, right? So when you look at it in perspective, maybe it looks something like this from the side, right? That's a window. And it actually is correct, not incorrect. Let me maybe organize my lines a bit better. Something like this. But here's what most of us get wrong. If you were to rotate this window to face us, what you'd actually get is this. Because we have a tendency to misjudge this gap right here. I drew it very close to this, too close. What would actually happen probably is we'll get this from a side view. The more you rotate, the more extreme it gets, right? Now, this is just an aside. All I'm doing is showing you how prone we are to illusions. We're not talking about cityscapes today. I just wanted to show you real fast. Now, look at these windows here. Okay? We're looking at windows and talking about optical illusions. Look at how this is actually super, th super thin. How easy would it be to think that these windows are like this? without seeing this, right? 
So whatever you imagine it to be, cut it in half and you'll probably be more accurate. And this is for windows that are closer to us. Look at what happens here when it's farther. It's just a strip, a line. Same thing here, right? These windows, very thin. Okay, so just something to have in mind here if we're talking about optical illusions. Very often, you'll think to yourself, it's this thin, cut it in half, and you may be more accurate. Okay? Um, the, even though the cars were at the same distance, their distance by that angle would be lower, though. Um, this is, yeah, it's just, it's such a, you know, it's such a huge illusion. Very often when we measure things into perspective, you'd be better off to cut all your distances in half. That would be one way of treating this, like of being more pragmatic about it if you want to. And that's kind of um, a nice guideline to go by, I guess. Um, Lollipop, what are you using right now? Can you tell us or send the link of what you're using? Do you mean um, the tablet, the drawing or the software? Uh, let me know what you mean. Uh, I'm using Clip Studio Paint. Clip Studio Paint by Celsius. Um, I do have to warn you, they changed their terms. You need to do your research because they changed how upgrades work. Um, so you'll have to be careful there. Um, I did a video with them, recommending them uh, a, while, a short while ago, but they actually made a big, um, a big change to their plans. Uh, I did promote the monthly plan, so not a big difference for the most part, but they actually got a lot of people angry. But the software itself is great. I use it for a bunch of stuff. Um, and the tablet I'm using is a Huion Canvas. That's what it's called. I, I, I like it a lot, but there, there are better models to use because um, it's quite old by now, but Huion Canvas Pro. 16 because i think it's 16 inches that's what i'm using right now uh, you can pause the video get the name uh, let's look at some of your comments and then we'll continue to the next one um so obviously as we totally miss it pam indeed that's it's just so easy to miss uh, monica this is helpful thank you you got it nikki question if you're doing a landscape but the focal point is way in the distance how would you approach that without making the focal point disproportionately bigger compared to the things in the foreground. Right, okay. So there are a lot of means in our disposal because what you ask right now is more of a compositional question, um, which is great. We have more means at our disposal for creating focal points. Not only size, not only detail, which could be useful by the way too in this example, but also value, color, temperature. So what I would do, I'll use perspectives rules to guide me and have it be smaller right have it be a little less prominent in terms of size maybe even detail but i will make it more prominent when it comes to the value when it comes to the color and temperature so i could show you a very practical example right now so let's say let me create a new canvas just for fun and let's um, Phil, I'm like, I'm not a genius in digital, but, or you know what we can actually use in existing view. Yeah, this is actually great. So you have this desert, right? And you probably see where I'm going with this. If I want to put a very prominent detail somewhere here. I'll just use a strong temperature difference. So I'll place something like this here, blue, right? This is yellow. I could do a purple. Right, or maybe purple doesn't bounce as much. Even red would be more visible, actually. But something along these lines that will contrast very well, like a cool, dark color. Now, this isn't maybe as practical, right? Because you probably won't see this kind of a thing in a desert scene. What you will see is a green landscape with a small little cottage or a building that has a red rooftop and that's where you can really play up this effect right um so that will be a big thing you can you can utilize so not size because perspective prevents us to 
not you know anything else but color and value make it extremely darker extremely lighter right imagine a seascape at night and a small lighthouse that has this beautiful kind of foggy light you will notice it because of the values and maybe even the temperature right so that's a great thing to use um but yeah Winifred, okay, thank you. Uh, yeah, sorry, <laughs> I, I think I didn't really help you with that, but sorry. Uh, uh, DG, very helpful, thank you so much. Uh, Marjorie, sorry uh, to be late, had oral surgery. Oh, sorry to hear. Yesterday and today, back to dentist, we'll have to watch as a repeat. Hope you all learn much. Yeah, thank you so much, uh, and feel well. Hopefully it's not something too bad. Uh, Diane, cut in half, great tip, yep. yep. Uh, Daniel, okay, got a question. Two windows next to each other on the same wall, their X lines are gonna be continuous complementary, right? So let me make sure I understand. So you're saying if I have a couple of windows, so let's say I have a, let's make it simple. I have a horizon line, and then I have a building, goes like that, let's say. And then you have a bunch of windows on that, right? So you have one window, and then we'll drop our guideline in the middle. Two windows next to each other on the same wall. Their X lines are going to be continuous. So when you go like this, you'll measure the same distance. And then when you go like that, you'll measure another window, right? So you'll have one window. and another window, right? And then it will continue following those X's. Yes. Does that make sense? Now, there's actually something cool you can do, again, if you know the rules of perspective, because you can actually measure not only the windows, but the distance between the windows. Let me show you. So let's say you have a window and another window and another window, right? Now, these gaps are not the same as the windows. There's actually a way to measure that as well. You'll have to use what is called a, oh, I forgot its name, but it's gonna be this. Let me see if I can get it right. So, this, and this is actually a top. Let's see if I can get it. Yeah, I got it. Okay. What you'll do is, I forgot the name of this thing, but it's very useful. So let's see, I'll do this. And this. Unfortunately, it's outside our frame. Race vanishing point. Oh, I forgot its name. And I want it to be inside the frame. So let me do this. I want to show you because just. You won't necessarily remember what I'm showing you right now, but it will make it will make it obvious how knowledge can help. So actually, let me move this. It's going to be a little ugly. That's okay. I'm going to add vanishing trace. Vanishing trace is what it is, I remember now. So I'll get another one like this. So let me show you what happens. This is a bit tedious, but it's interesting. So. I want to, oh, I messed it up. Let me, let me, let me re rearrange some stuff. Okay, okay, my bad, my bad, my bad. I do want to go into this example because it's important. I'm gonna do a new layer. I'm gonna do here, and hopefully I answered your previous question. Okay, check. I think this is the best time to show you these kinds of things, so why not? So let's say I have a horizon line like this, and then, I have once again, um, how do I want to, let's do it like this. There's a building, it has windows on it, they all go to the vanishing point, so around here, this is our vanishing point, and then out of that vanishing point we'll do a row of windows, So this is the gap between the windows. How do we measure its distance? 
and get a gap in there. I'm going to do this, this kind of guideline. Now, what's going to happen is we'll try and get it right this time. Right. So we'll get what is called a vanishing trace. Now, I kind of forgot where to place it. I think it doesn't even matter. Yeah, we're good. So this line cuts this line, this vertical line here at this point. At this stage, any line that's going to come out of this corner and meet it here is going to recreate this distance right here. So this distance, and I'm going to switch to a different color, is going to be equal to this distance, believe it or not. And you can actually tell because it's longer than this, and it should be shorter if it was the same as this. And notice it's a little confusing. Now let's do the same thing for the actual windows. So I'm going to drop. This is going to be much lower, so it's not going to be in our scene. Maybe I'll do this. Let's let's give it a try. And it's a bit crazy what I'm trying to do now, but because I want to show you how you can measure two distances. But I mean, why am I working too hard? You're going to see this in the course. But in any case, yeah. So this same trace, we call it this down here, vanishing trace. Going to be like this. If we drop a line from this corner to down here, wherever that's going to be, and we'll drop one from here, it's going to reach that, that same point. So to find the next distance of the window, all we have to do is take out another line from this vanishing point. It's a way, sorry, it's super, it's super annoying because I can't show you all the, it's too, I need, I need to structure it differently and I forgot how to structure it to show it more clearly. But this, by using another vanishing line like this, you can actually, and if I rotate this entire scene, you will see that what we've created in essence is another, another horizon line, okay? But it's a way to measure simultaneously two different distances. So you measure this distance and the red distance, which is different simultaneously. It's, I'll find a better way to represent it and I'll share it with you. But yeah, yeah, I got it, I got it somehow to work, right, Daniel? Um, it's just another horizon line. It's, it works the exact same way. Um, zoom out a bit, zoom out a bit. Oh, don't worry, don't be overwhelmed. It's okay. My point is this, if you know the rules, which aren't as hard to figure out, they're not as hard as you think. Know the rules, it'll be much easier to draw this. And then the next time you draw a building, you don't have to think about all the rules. All you have to do is, you know that you have a building here, right? Here's a building. I know that the windows are gonna be so tightly squeezed, they're just gonna be a line, right? And maybe if we have a really close window, we'll see a bit more of that, right? But you'll do it without thinking about it. But in order to get to that point, just knowing some basic rules can be very useful. And these are basic. I'm, I promise you, it's not that hard. Uh, but anyways, yeah. Whew. <laughs> uh, word I. Will you also talk about color? Not this time. Maybe, you know, it touches here and there like we just did. But for the most part, it's going to be about um, rules, very basic rules of perspective. Um, Daiji, nice. If you're using Hui on Canvas, that's what it is like to get. That's what I like to get once I can afford to. I'm using their small tablets. Oh, cool. It's a pretty good alternative to the higher, yeah, to the, you know, the Cintiqs and stuff like that. I told this story before. I got very lucky with this. Well, let me show you a bit of my face now. Hello. <laughs> I got very lucky with this tablet. Um, because someone posted it in a local um, painting gr uh, drawing group. We have a big drawing group. Uh, it's called Betsefer Letziot Drawing School. Someone posted it there uh, for sale. And it was the same price as you'd buy it in the store in the US, which is never the case here. Things are super expensive here, unfortunately. And I was like, yeah, sure. I <laughs> did the drive to Jerusalem, uh, an hour and something, an hour and change, and bought it directly from it. It was a super cool guy. I brought my Mac. He showed me, like, we connected it, made sure everything works. 
it was just a great find for me. Great find. It was about $300, I think. So, yeah. Um, Nikki says, my eyes struggle to rest on anything on the street scene. I wonder what the photographer was drawn to in this scene. Yeah, usually to solve that, especially in a painting, you'll have a very based focal point. Now, this particular scene that we looked at, um, let me find my mouse, uh, of the cars, that's actually... Um, it's a, whoops, that was an annoying sound. It's actually a bit lacking. Let me uh, get rid of these layers. I'll show you. It's a bit lacking in terms of the focal points to me. So if I were to paint this, I'll probably drop like a big red thing here or some, oops, you can't see anything, sorry. Uh, or s something, see, something like a big, even a red car or something to break it off. Now you can already rest on these red areas, right, that I put in here. Um, so yeah, that's, that's something that it's important to take into consideration, especially if you're, you know, uh, a painter and you have to create something visually captivating. Um, if you're a photographer, you work with what you have, right? And I could edit this photo to exaggerate some of the, the you know, the cars and the colors, but, but yeah, generally speaking, yep. Um, Daniel, also, are there ways to apply different perspectives for an object and a background, but sharing the same vanishing point? Would it get into the un any value. Uh, are there ways to apply different perspectives for an object and a background, but sharing the same? Um, I think what you're describing is possible. Um, but I'm not sure in practicality. I'll have to figure. I'll have to figure out how it would work. I can't tell you off the top of my head. And you say it looks uh, complex. It just looks complex because I was bad at explaining it. Once I do a proper explanation, I just need to revise my materials. It's not hard at all, I promise you. Um, so yeah, of course I am. Hey, Leroy, how are you doing? Thank you so much for being here. Pam, thank you. I appreciate it. Lynn, wow, I just joined. I'm glad you explained what that was all about. Now I understand. I joined in the middle of all those lines. Yep, yep. It's a bit complex if you just drop in the middle. Uh, Linda, yes, would love to see the two horizon method to discover the width of windows. Uh, good idea for us. Thank you. Um, Plumpy, I can feel my brain changing whenever I'm in a perspective lesson. I love it. Uh, Daniel, I'm crazy. Around. <laughs> no, you're not crazy. You, you, you have good points. Very good points. Um, yeah. So, you know, these concepts, like I understand them, but to explain it effectively, there's, there are good ways, but there are better ways of showing it. And that's the more uh, pedagogical side of it. That's something I need to revise. But if I do, if I actually do a course on it, it's going to be chef's kiss. So now let's move on from this scene. We don't need that anymore. Bye bye Tokyo scene. Do not save. Um, and we don't need this one too. And we kind of went over this, but let me show you. So this is a great example of how this applies uh, to something like this, like a desert scene, right? So when you look at all these dunes, let me switch over so you can actually see what I'm showing you. When you look at these dunes, it is very apparent, these same concepts. Let me, good, okay. Uh, it's very apparent how this works. So when you look at these dunes that are closer to us, that's one big dune. But if you compare it to these small ones, small ones, right? It's very clear that perspectives at play. Now, let me show you something insane. At the back here, we have this crazy mountain ridge, right? Now, this is approximately its size compared to or placed next to the horizon, right? Now, This is our dune here. Now, let's say that's its size. Let's be generous here. Let's be more conservative with the measurement. Look at the distance in size. This is one single dune. And if we go into the distance, these are tiny 
additional dunes. This is a huge mountain ridge. It's huge. And still, the power of perspective makes this much bigger on paper. Okay? So, what I told you earlier, remember, cut it in half. That's like a very good guideline to go by. Because it actually, you can see it, right? You can tell. It's crazy. So, I just wanted to reiterate that point. Now, I actually had another use for the dune scene, I think. Um, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. The, the spaciousness and density. So, if you look at these dunes, once again, that idea of when we're on the foreground, everything is very uh, nice and spacious, right? You can see all the details on the dune, with the wind moving, the sand, and it's really, really neat. But look at all these dunes. Look at how tightly spaced they are. They're just one on top of the other, okay? So in this area, we have like one, two, three, four, five, six, like a bazillion dunes. If you grab that same area and bring it over here, we have one dune. <laughs> two maybe, if we're lucky. Okay, now, one more thing I wanted to say here um, was the vertical distance. Okay, so in this vertical distance between one dune and another, we can fit, let me grab just this thing here, we can fit a gazillion dunes in the background and the entire mountain ridge, okay? And even if we take, let's say, this gap, let's change color, you see, let's find a good one, okay. This dune, where's my, why won't you draw? What have I done to upset you? Oh yeah, I'm in a selection. Okay, this tip of the dune, right, right here, and this tip of the dune, it looks quite farther apart, right? So this gap here, look at how that gap comes into play here. Again, this is such a huge difference. And it will continue working the more we get into the background, okay? The more we get into the background, this concept will continue. So let me show you one more, one last time. Peak of dune, peak of dune, distance, grab that distance, bring it over something a little farther. And I know it's hard to see, but three dunes here. One, two, three, maybe even four, right? Same distance between two dunes. So this concept continues as we move into the distance. It's not like this is huge and everything here is tiny. This is huge compared to this. This is huge compared to this. This is huge compared to this and so on, okay? That wraps up, I think, the Dune example. It's a very... Um, I think we looked at it very much in depth. Okay, let me move this a bit if I can. There we go. Just changing my uh, position on the chair. Now let's close this off. We have a lot more to look at. So let's go back to port. Okay, I wanted to show you. So this is not a cityscape, but it's still a human-made structure. And for human-made structures, perspective is going to be even more significant. So I would argue, probably, that these two container ships are somewhat of equal length. Again, if you see these in the ocean, you'll see one ship and another ship. And they're kind of similar size. This distance is pretty much probably this distance. That's how extreme it gets. <laughs> okay, just wanted to reiterate that point. This container even, let's grab, we do another layer here. Let's grab this small container and just move it not too far onto the next row of containers. What do we see here? This 
just a little bit into the distance. Look at all this extra length we have here. I know I'm reiterating the point, but it's very important to think about these things and have them in mind. And I'm not even beginning to move this thing even further and further and further and further. Okay? And you can look at it the other way, right? You can say, okay, that's a container. Now let's grab this little thing here in the distance and look at how much, look at how insignificant it is, right? Same sizes. I really want to brainwash you into realizing that. It's that important. Whenever you do a, a landscape, it's that important. Okay? Um, I guess we get afraid of dropping heights to bigger objects at distances. Yet yeah, it sounds fierce to draw a giant robot similar to an ant, smaller like an ant, but it's all based on what we're expressing. Yep. Yeah. It's based on what we're expressing and what we're seeing, too. Lumpy, quick question on the dunes. Painting the far side, would those be... <laughs> but, but wait, you didn't finish the question, Plumpy. Let me know and we'll go back to it, okay? Uh, so this is it for the containers. And you can look at the same thing, again, uh, in terms of um, spacious and, and, um, and dense. How many containers fit here? Like one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Maybe there's more, like maybe ten, let's say. Grab this same square. How many containers fit in here? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. Okay, and on and on and on. And don't worry, if this gets repetitive, I'll start, uh, you know, going over things fast. Oh, okay. This is actually a great example. So I want to show you three scenes, I believe. One. Uh, okay, okay. So. So far, we've been talking about basic general rules of perspective and how they apply to landscapes. Now, I want to show you how some scenes just aren't as effective for showing depth. Okay, so this example here is very flat. So far, we've seen things going away from us, and you can see it here, even. So if you look at this, going away from us, beautiful canal and you know, whatever, um, Venice or wherever this is, probably Venice, looks like Venice. But if you look at this, it's very flat. We're looking at all the buildings from the front. So there's not much perspective at play. There is just a bit of it. If you're, if you're sharp and you've been practicing this for a while, you may know that we're probably at a bit of an angle because you can see this diagonal here, it's diagonal. So you know that if you go way outside, by the way, I can add perspective lines, I can show you. Uh, let's do, um, how do I do this? It's been ages since I did that. Uh, perspective lines in particular. Let me try. It's gonna be a bit challenging. I think it's a special. Um, parallel, I think, yeah. So this is one line. And then I think the other one goes like this. So you'll actually get these two lines to meet way, way to the left of the scene, okay? So the perspective is very subtle, thus irrelevant. So have that in mind that when choosing scenes that show, oops, I rotated it. I have no idea, I think like this, yeah. When choosing scenes where you want to show depth going inward, don't go for something like this. One more thing you'll notice is, look at all the windows here. They're a little, oh, I have my grid, my uh, special rulers here, let's get rid of them. You'll notice the windows are a little wider than if they were at an angle, right? Look at this here. Look at how thin the window is. And look at it here. So that's one thing to have in mind. I want you to, to think about the scene you're choosing. Does it serve your purpose or not? Okay? This scene doesn't show great perspective, and that's okay. Your focal point may be this beautiful yellow boat down at the bottom. That's great. That's perfect. Okay? So just wanted to reiterate that. 
Shirley, thank you so, so much for the super chat and the sticker number one. Really appreciate it. Um, this is awesome. Every time someone drops a super chat, I'm like, yes, that's amazing. So thank you so, so much. Really do appreciate it. Um, every support is, is huge. Honestly, like every small support is huge. Um, so let's move on to the next scene. Let's see what you're saying in the chat. Evergreen is indeed a fun name for a container plumpy. Um, interesting. It's, look, it's like looking at a telephone and electricity poles heading off into the distance. Nikki, we're going to have exactly that. In one of the later examples, I'll show you exactly that because I want to talk about uh, patterns and direction. You see, it's a very important topic. Plumpy, I guess it's time for another coffee in the furthest segment of dunes or water or any open nature scene. Would you let the eye imagine details or put in little strokes to make the perspective pop? Okay, part of perspective, and you love this, Plumpy, this is all rules of nature. But when you make art, you can break a lot of it, actually. So what I would do is I will show the closest dunes, maybe a few of the farther ones, but at the distance, my means for creating a sense of depth would be to remove those details. So you'll probably see a very clean horizon line. That's another mistake that people make. Sometimes they try to put in all the details they see, including the dip details in the very back. And that's okay if you're going for a hyper-realistic look and everything is like, is, is, top notch in the front, you get all the different details, the smaller wind marks on the dunes. But if you're simplifying things, getting those details in the background will be very counterproductive. Okay, so what you want to do instead is drop them, right? Or make them much lighter, much smaller, much less significant. That's something to have in mind. Ruth Barks. <clears throat> okay. Nikki, oh my god, they're really container ships. Just saw the containers. Well, these must be huge. Yep, they're huge. Uh, Plumpy, difficult when to know to call it on the tiny details like that for me. Yep, yeah, I get it. It's a tough decision. Um, my advice to you would be try it out. See if you feel like you've gone into too many details or if you're... Um, if you're finding yourself obsessing over them or you don't like the final look, that's a strong sign, drop some details. It's perfectly okay. Um, let's see. Alex, why is it that every time I use perspective on this photo I took, it turns out terrible? Um, so do you mean, what do you mean use perspective? Are you drawing it? Or are you trying to sketch and paint it? The reason it usually looks terrible is maybe you don't recognize perspective correctly. So sometimes it's easy to interpret things wrong. So like, where's the horizon line here, right? Where is it in this particular image we're looking at right now? Maybe you're not analyzing it correctly. So one thing I would do is connect parallel lines. So let's say this line and that line are, whoops, that's not what I meant to do, are parallel. That's where they meet. So that's where your horizon line is going to be. And from there, you can start taking out lines like this. Now it turns, so you'll have a different vanishing point here. And this building is gonna maybe, you know, conform to this. You'll have some interesting things going on, okay? But one of the easiest ways to find and better understand perspective. I'm going to lower my voice a bit. My voice is getting tired easily. Let's see. I'm going to I'm going to do a test. I'm going to talk like this and let's see if I can hear myself. This huge delay. Let me see. I'm talking. I'm talking quietly. I'm waiting to hear myself because there's a delay. Ah, uh, whatever. It's going to be fine. Um, I need to lower my voice a bit. Uh, but yeah. I don't know why my voice gets tired fast. I'm, I'm probably not using it correctly. I should probably learn some vocal exercises to get it to not be as tired. Um, is it the lens of the camera altering the lines? Uh, it depends on your lens, right? Uh, what lens do, I'm not a big expert, but lens often uh, play around with your uh, field of view, right? So a wider lens is going to show you a narrower view and a less of a wide lens, I think, will show you more view. 
the perspective rules stay the same, Alex. So it's not about that. Now, what you can do, if you want, is send me a photo, show me your perspective, and we'll figure it out. Yeah, I think that will be the best way to approach this, because it's, it's a bit tricky. It will really vary depending on your image. Uh, let's see. Nick, I understand what you mean, Plumpy Lump, but can think of a... Uh, so let's see here. Picking the right scene. Small city gaming, yeah, that's huge. Just knowing what to paint. Um, just call me Murph. Started painting four weeks ago after watching some of your videos. I'm finding it hard to break the habit of getting all the details in. Yeah. Uh, did you check out the frustration-free watercolor course? You may want to check that out. And for a free course, I actually have my How to Simplify course here on YouTube. We'll show you how to get rid of that obsession to some extent. Give it a go. Uh, let's move on to the next one. I think it'll be another example. Okay, good. This is another example of a scene that may not necessarily be ideal to paint. Why is that? The reason is we don't really see that much of perspective at play here. The, and this could be a bit of my pet peeve of the composition being a little too boring and even. But what you get is this mountain ridge. Let me make this a little. This mountain ridge. And that mountain ridge. And that's pretty much it. So there's this distance. Now this is a larger distance. This is shorter. It's not interesting enough for me. It's pretty repetitive. Now, had it been another mountain ridge here, and then this one, and then this one, we'll get a bit of a better feel for this right here right perspective. This doesn't feel captivating enough. You could paint it and make something beautiful out of it, but if we just talk about depth and perspective, I probably would not do this. Or I would definitely change the shape here so that it's not as identical, right? So maybe you'll break it off and make this a little different, right? It ended up being identical, maybe like this. Maybe two peaks here and then one here, you know? Something has to give. To me, this isn't interesting enough. Um, let's see here. Plumpy, sorry to go off topic, but speaking of perspective, is that the guitar or ukulele? It's a guitar. It's a small guitar, though. Uh, so it's a bit hard. And thank you, Just Call Me Murph, for checking these out. Uh, let me know your thoughts. Uh, it's a small guitar I bought in South America and Chile, and it has a whole bunch of stickers I bought there. I can show it to you later if you want me to. Um, so yeah, so that's a scene you may want to skip. I'm going to show you another one. This one. Okay. What happens here is that there aren't too many elements moving from us away into the scene. So for example, maybe a fence that kind of pulls us in, you know, even if it's a it goes around like this, right? Fence goes into the scene. This could be very nice and interesting. There isn't any of that. This scene in effect is just this and this, whoopsie, whoopsie, <laughs> and this and this here. Everything down here leads us to this. Now, don't get me wrong. You can paint this have a beautiful end result you can paint just about anything you want the one difference is don't expect there to be too much of a sense of depth here and in fact i'd probably cut out some of the bottom okay let me show you another one i would probably never paint this one colors are super saturated we have this one big thing and it's again not throwing shade at the person who painted who took the picture the picture is beautiful i just wouldn't paint it two strong colors will throw me off with watercolor. Nothing here to pull you really into the scene. I'm missing that road, that something to bring me into the scene, okay? I'm just saying perspective isn't always dominant. When nothing goes away from you, sometimes it's not as dominant. Okay, now let's go back. This, I wanna, oh no, this is actually what I wanted to show you. Okay, so Alex, I'm gonna take a look. Um, I'm going to take a look now at this photo you sent me because later I may forget. Um, let's see. Oh. 
Okay. Now, I will be curious to see... So, I don't know if you want everyone to see this photo, but I will uh, take a screen capture. I'm going to write a note for myself to help you. Because what happens there, you have something... I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to draw it for you, and you'll better understand it. Um, see here? Just give me recent... So, I'll, I'll try and draw it on the screen. Okay, I cut out the parts that show another photo, and um, I guess it's okay to show it, right? But what you have here, I'll, I'll just draw it and everyone will understand, hopefully. So what you have here is a scene with perspective that goes up. You have stairs, what happens is, it's, it's a challenging one, but you have stairs that go up like this and move towards us and widen. And we're looking from below and there's a structure and whatnot, okay? What happens in these cases is the perspective goes above the horizon line. So it's somewhere up there in the corner and these lines head towards there. Now, because this is rounded, You'll have endless amounts in theory of perspective points, but it doesn't matter as much. And then you have the stairs, right? And they get smaller the further they go away from us, right? So something like this. And then we do see some of these lines here. Showing it like that. This is blocked by something here that goes into a different horizon line that is probably the true horizon line because this is parallel to the ground while these lines go up and so you get and then it flattens out and you get this kind of a thing okay it's a bit complex stairs stuff like that a little harder to do but i can definitely include it in the course if i end up doing it okay now, if we were to, we actually see some of these steps, actually, my bad. So we see some of this and some of this, some of this. But as we get to the horizon line, they disappear. And then you can skip. Let me do this. Change the color and we're skipping over the steps. Does that make sense? Um, it's a bit complex because you have... So what happens sometimes with stairs, let me simplify it for us. Sometimes what will happen with stairs is you have the horizon line, right? And everything falls on that and maybe you'll have a road. Imagine a road, right? Just a road there and you have maybe even a car taking a nice ride on that road, okay? Right? And then you have stairs. The stairs vanishing point is not this vanishing point. It's gonna be up there. So, this is often what will happen. Let's say it's huge step, stairs, okay? Something like this. See? And so, this is the stairs vanishing point. Happy you got it. Okay, good. It's tough, it's tough. This is one of the more complex things. that When you get multiple horizon lines and all of that, yeah, it's tough. Uh, so let's move on to another photo. There we go. I wanted to talk to you about directions. So we've shown how things that move away from us tend to create depth and a feeling of like we're going inside. Okay? This is the perfect example of that. We have here both elements that go away from us and elements that are parallel to us so let me visualize this for you these go parallel to us so what you'll see is their distances i'll bet you are approximately equal distance one and let's move it around let's even duplicate it i'm not used to the windows uh, shortcuts let's just do controls see Pretty much the same. But once it moves away from us, that's when perspective becomes more dominant. See? So it moves parallel to us, away from us, 
parallel, completely away, parallel away, it does something like this, okay? So that's, those are the instances you want to look for that having of distances, okay? So when you have a pole here and a pole here at the same distance and a pole here at the same distance, but then all of a sudden there's a pole back there. Look at the distance here, right? Compare that to this. See, it becomes shorter. Okay, sorry for that ugly editing, but you get the point. That's where you really wanna pay attention to things squeezing together, okay? And this is the perfect example, this entire scene, because it really shows you how these things sticking out of the water have varying distances when it comes to how far or close they are to each other, okay? This looks like the same distance in reality, right? This looks closer. So sometimes the gap will change too, so don't be thrown off by that. And these are completely one over the other, okay? Um, yeah, well, that's pretty much what I wanted to do for this example. Josephine, so the object in front of the first set of stairs you draw has its own vanishing point. Yeah, I did this course exactly. Yep. yep. The, the thing is, well, I closed it. Oh, or it's still here. I can show you. The thing with uh, this example is that everything that is parallel to the ground is going to be... Um, is gonna go into the same vanishing point, you see? These lines are parallel to the ground. A car is parallel to the ground, right? This is parallel, this is parallel, the road is parallel. This part of the stairs is parallel, so it's gonna probably end up on this, on not the same vanishing point, but the same horizon line, right? Something like, it should, it should reach the same place. That's me messing up, but see, something like this. But this, Nice. <laughs> Where was I? This moves way up there. It's going to be a different one. Okay. Um, if you imagine you have a bar to hold on to, right? It's going to be a completely different one. That's the, the whole point. Uh, so I hope this fog example makes sense. Um, yeah, tie dye. It's not a ukulele. I'm going to show you. Now, I want to show you something really cool here. Now, we're getting to the last example. We're going to finish this soon. This is, it's tiring, right? To soak up a lot of information. This comes into play. And here's where I want you to hear me really well. This comes into play also in more abstract scenes. So, what you get here is skies. There isn't much going on, right? However, same principles apply. So let me show you. Horizon line right here. And this is closer to us, right? So you'll notice that the waviness on the shore is larger the closer it is to us. So same concept from before. Look at how smaller this is, right? Compared to this big wavy shape, this big wavy shape. But also the sky is affected by this. So you'll find that these patterns in the sky of clouds and different elements of light also follow this rule of perspective. They get thinner and smaller the farther they go. Now, you could have, in theory, a small cloud here and a huge cloud back there, and they'll be similar sized, right? Because this cloud at the back is so huge that it beats and, and think about it, think about things moving into the, into the depth, into the distance, right? Because it can be a little confusing, right? This is moving into the scene. This cloud is behind this cloud, okay? Maybe easier if I actually do them overlap. Maybe easier if I use a color you can actually see. So green and then a cloud overlapping behind it. And they're the same size because this one, cloud A, is so much bigger than cloud B. So with it beats the perspective, but for the most part, what you will actually get is patterns that become smaller and smaller and larger and larger, larger, smaller, okay? 
That's a very common thing to have in mind when you paint. Just wanted to reiterate that. And yeah, that's a beautiful photo, Nancy. I love this. This would be very tough to paint in watercolor and get all these bright saturated colors, very challenging. Um, but I wanted to show you how this applies also to very abstract views like this one. Uh, now let's move on to uh, the next one, show you. Same thing, density, the principle of density. This little square contains here one, two, three, four, five, six, like 11, 12 trees, whereas the same size here will be one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, maybe. It's even a little bigger. I let myself be fooled, okay? But think about it this way. Up close, you can see more details, right? But And back there, everything is more dense together. So this tree, same size as this tree, same size as this tree, and so on, okay? I wanted to talk about density there. Um, and beautiful scene, by the way, too. Really good for watercolor. This is another one of these examples. There's not much going on here. It's pretty much divided in half, but you can still apply the principle of, of perspective to where you actually see something, which is the trees. Here we go. Tiny trees in the background, larger trees in the foreground. Much more dense, much more distanced and spacious. And then, let's see what else. Uh, we have here, um, I don't even remember why I put this, but even if you look at a more abstract kind of thing, again, this is a line, this is a line where the crops change, this is a line, this is a line, this is a line. I haven't done anything, like this is a hedge, right? I haven't done anything, and still we get perspective at play. So actually it would be better if I draw all of these in a separate layer and show you. So I'm, I'm gonna try and be accurate. One, and be fair. Every time I see a change in crop or in color, I'm gonna draw that, okay? Here, and here. And then let's make the background disappear. This tells the story pretty well pretty well it's not as extreme as some of the examples we've seen earlier you can understand this is probably going into the distance without doing too much okay these principles are very important and if you paint your landscapes in a way that's very flat whereas you make all of these gaps same space right maybe you do this even Where's the depth, right? Should go something like this and lead you into the scene, right? And again, there is no should, it will depend on the scene. Maybe you don't want to show this, so this gap gets wider. That's a possibility, right? But still the overall theme here, notice what happens. Even in the most simplified scenes that apparently there isn't much going on, there still is. Same for the gaps between trees, you see, the, the horizontal gaps get smaller too, without you even noticing. So we have a gap here, a gap here, a gap here. Look at this. This is a gap. This is a gap. Tiny gaps, right? Big gap may be similar to this one. So just general guidelines. Uh, and on to the last one. I don't remember what this one. Okay. I wanted to show you something cool. This picture was taken at a relatively low angle close to the water's surface. That's at least how I feel. Okay, it may not be as fully accurate, but look at what happens here. The closer you get to the surface, the more extreme this is gonna get. See? Now, if you go up at a higher angle, the less extreme it's gonna be. The best way I can dictate this to you, the, the dictate, um, I can <laughs> dictate it. Uh, the best way I can demonstrate it is, imagine a chessboard, okay? or checkers, something like that. Now, this isn't as straightforward as you'd think, but if we look at it from a lower angle, you'll get this kind of a thing, right? And it will go into the distance and so on. Now, if we look at it from a lower angle, AKA closer to I'm gonna have to erase some things here, make them disappear. Or maybe just, let's do this, I know what I'm doing. Sorry, this is a little clunky. 
I'll I want a nice room to show you. Let's this and do that. Oops, that's not what I wanted to do. There we go. Okay, done. Now, if we were to look at it from an even lower angle, see this? Even more extreme. You'll get one, and then quadrillion ones that are smaller. Okay, so all of this explanation just to show you how the lower our angle is, the more extreme this effect gets. Okay? That's it. And, and what's a good way of remembering it? What's the least extreme example you can think of? Straight from above. Straight from above. But then as you move it, it becomes more and more extreme. This effect. Okay? So, I think this is pretty much it. I hope that makes sense. We went through 15 images and I showed you, hopefully successfully demonstrated to you, how perspective rules apply to landscapes, seascapes, natural views, things you wouldn't necessarily think they apply to, and how you can incorporate them in your landscapes and create something that just looks more believable. Because that's the goal with this. The goal with rules of perspective is to make our work more believable. Okay. And it's a good place to start with because we're mostly looking at sizes and distances and it's not as important to have parallel lines that are accurate like this checkers or chessboard, right? It's not as important. I hope that makes sense. Let me know if you have any questions. In the meantime, let's look at the chat. Pam says, oh man, I need to go back and review my paintings and references. I would challenge everyone who watches this, grab a painting of a landscape you did <coughs> or some kind of a view. See if you were able to get that effect in of having an even thirding of the distances. See if it actually, if you follow it. And ask yourself if doing more of that will make that painting look better. I think you'll find a few examples. I'll find a few examples of me missing completely this thing. Um, Nancy, thanks for all the time and thought that goes into creating your amazing live streams. Thank you so much, Nancy. Uh, Deep Krishan, uh, hello, sir. How are you? I'm doing well. I'm doing really well. Um, this setup I have here, like two monitors, tablet, it's amazing. It's so much more comfortable than uh, the way I used to work. It's just incredible. Like I, the camera, I can't pull it out enough because of the cable, but like <laughs> I need to show you what's going on there. It's, it's really, it's so nice. And of course the computer with the lights uh, and the light in the background that I don't know if you can see down here. Um, this is my favorite color. It's a bit hard to see because there's still daylight, but uh, I love this thing. <laughs> so it's fun. Um, let's see what else. Um, Nikki, in case I missed the end, thank you so much. Thank you. John, great live stream, Leron, so informative. Thank you so much. Wertai, thank you so much too. Uh, Deep Christian, sir, do, do five point perspective is important for drawing a realistic landscape? Nope, not at all. <laughs> not at all. Um, I don't know what the username, let me try and read it, LKMRDA. Do you ever use other software or is it always Clip Studio? Do you recommend that one? So actually for photo editing, if you want to edit photos, Photoshop is, I think, the best option out there. If you want to draw and make digital art, Clip Studio to me is better, especially if you want to do comics or something that has a structure to it where it will help you. Uh, Clip Studio also has animation features, but it's a separate license it's different i think it's more expensive <clears throat> but i would recommend clip studio paint they did have a recent controversy of changing their subscription model and update how they update the software um so i would look into that uh, before i make a purchase uh, i feel good about myself because a lot of people have been marketing them for years because they're one-time purchase um and now they they're, they plan on switching to a model that will encourage you more to um to pay for a subscription that's the thing and i marketed more of the subscription anyway um so okay but yeah do your research uh, it's good it's good for for any of the things you see me do here in digital art it's great uh, if you just want to edit photos or you are more in need of editing photos i use photoshop for the most part even though this has the functionality, you can play with levels and saturation and a bunch of stuff, but for the more advanced stuff, Photoshop for sure. 
Um, applause, applause. Thank you, Pam. Alex, have you ever seen any of Ian Roberts' work on YouTube? Both of you guys have turned me into a much better artist. Cool. Yeah, I'm familiar with Ian Roberts. I keep confusing him with someone else, which is funny. Um, let me uh, let me see if I do remember the right person, Ian Roberts. Just make sure. I think I know who that is. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He does like super realistic stuff. Yeah, I love his um, uh, how to simplify or what do I do with all these details. That was a video I really enjoyed, especially. I think it was especially necessary too. Um, so yeah. Um, let's see. Average Kirby Enjoyer. What's your opinion on Clip Studio and new subscription? Yeah, so we talked a bit about that. So if you've been using it as a subscription on an iPad or something like that, of course it sucks. I think it's it doesn't it's the same. But if you used it as a software, the thing is, I think a lot of what they said it wasn't misinterpreted, but it was how bad it was was initially exaggerated. Because what they said is we guarantee to um to provide updates for functionality so it's, it doesn't break basically uh, once you update it but you will have to purchase if i'm not mistaken a new version if you want the next version version 3 it'll be a yearly thing so what you can do is pay for a subscription where you get everything new soft new version you get it right version 3 version 4 you get it but you pay monthly or you can wait until it's out and then buy it in one go. But it's different from what they had so far, which is basically you paid once, you get every update. Now they claim that the updates, hey, I mean, no worries, you can watch it, I'll leave it up on the channel. Um, they claim that any update that's in terms of compatibility and for it to continue work properly, they will still keep doing no matter what, if you keep your version, um, at least for like two years, I think, if not more. Um, so what ends up happening is most people, if you want new functions, will probably end up buying the next version once it's out and once, you know, so I would say it's a bit disappointing, um, for many people. Um, I don't know. I don't, I'm not sure what I think about it because to me, I don't feel the impact right now uh, and I use it for very specific things. So I'm, I guess I'm the one that was least hurt by it. Uh, but yeah, does I can understand why it does suck for some people. And then when you look at alternatives that are free forever, but again, Clip Studio Paint was free forever at some point, I guess. Um, and it still is, but the updates idea. So yeah, you know, a, a software right now that is that is praised for being free may do the same thing in the future. Is there a good solution? I don't know. Uh, but yeah, Amy, we talked about perspective and how it pertains to landscape painting. Uh, there's quite a lot of um, uh, examples. We went over 15 uh, pictures. Uh, I'm going to go over just to conclude this. And in the meantime, if anyone has questions, feel free to drop them. So we talked about how perspective does play a role in landscapes, seascapes, more organic scenes. But it's actually easier to incorporate because it's not about accurate measurements it's more about getting a feel for it and if you get a feel for that things get exponentially smaller the further they move away from you you will be able to um, make much more convincing and i think that's the key point here convincing drawings that look much better and that um that work that feel real um, and there's this thing that I talk about from time to time of how you want to paint correctly and you won't necessarily be able to paint pretty. What you want to do mostly is focus on painting in a correct way because that's what's really going to look uh, good and convincing to the eye. Uh, that's usually what I recommend. Um, no, no, no. See, this is one reason I love Procreate. It can be basic, but it's $10 forever for now anyway. Yeah, I sent you an email, I think, to the correct address this time. Cool. Okay, I'll, I'll see it. You know what? I'm going to open it now so that I don't forget. If anyone else wants to send me an email, now would be a good time to make sure I see it immediately. Uh, let me just in. And yeah, if anyone has questions, ask them now. And if not, we can move on. Um, Thank you, Shirley. Thank you so, so much. Really appreciate uh, you being here and everyone else who's here. Um, okay, yeah, I got, I got your email, I think. Yeah. Okay. Uh, I'll, I'll give it a look immediately after. Oh, I remember these. So you've already sent me these, right? I think I... Uh... Oh, wait, is this from now or am I confusing it with a different email? I'm not sure. 
I don't know. I'll figure it out. I'll figure it out if you send. Maybe there's a delay. Um, but in any case, I think we'll wrap it up for today. So thank you so much for everyone who was here. Again, if you want to learn how to draw, I do have my uh, Draw Anything course, Draw Anything You See course. The link is in the description box below. Uh, if you want to learn how to paint, let go of the rigid, rigidity, rigidness, go to the Frustration Free Watercolor course. If you want to learn how to simplify things, there's a free course here on YouTube, How to Simplify. If you want to just support me, and by the way, did you know that Patreon supporters get credit at the end of the video so if you want to if you want your name at the end of the video where i thank you so much for your support uh be sure to check out my patreon um i do have a couple of books on amazon on drawing and sketching not watercolor uh, if you want to check these out it's good for some people who want to hold a physical book in hand and many people don't know they exist uh, and other than that i will thank you so so much until the next time take care i think there won't be another video this week but there will be one of course next week and maybe two we'll see about that uh besides the live stream so thank you so so much take care stay safe i sent them before but it was a different email i wasn't sure okay okay <laughs> uh yeah i'll 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 check. I'll I'll see them hopefully soon. Uh, but thank you, thank you so so much. We'll talk to you again soon. See you in the next video and the next live stream. Until then, keep creating.